Hello, my name is Nick Bryan, and today I'll be talking about impulse response data augmentation and deep neural networks for blind room acoustic parameter estimation. In this work, we're interested in room acoustic scene understanding, and in particular, measuring, quantifying, or otherwise characterizing acoustical spaces directly from speech or other ambient audio. Interesting applications of this research area include acoustic forensics, for example, inspecting where a recording was made directly from an audio signal, and audio applications of augmented reality, for example, the task of seamlessly inserting new audio content in an existing sound scene. Traditionally, room acoustic measurements commonly begin by measuring what is called an acoustic impulse response, or air, which can be thought of as a compact representation of how sound propagates from a sound source to a microphone. Airs can be measured in a variety of ways, most commonly using a loud intrusive test tone that is injected into an acoustic space, which sounds like this. While playing back the tone, a recording is made simultaneously. The input tone and a recording of the tone are processed together to recover an air, which sounds like this. Given an air, further processing can be applied directly to it using what we call ground truth estimators. Ground truth estimators can be used to estimate physical or perceptual properties of an acoustical space. Two physical properties of interest include the reverberation time, denoted as T60, which is defined as the time it takes an impulsive sound to decay within a room by 60 decibels, and the direct to reverberant ratio, or DRR, which is the ratio of direct sound to reverberant sound in a room, and can be used as a proxy to understand how close or far a sound source is to a recording device in a room. Playing loud test tones in an acoustical space can be very disruptive. To avoid this, there has been a trend to use speech or other ambient audio content in conjunction with a learned estimator to blindly estimate room acoustic parameter characteristics. Existing approaches for blind room acoustic measurements from speech were benchmarked in the 2016 Acoustic Characterization of Environments Challenge or ACE Challenge paper. In this work, a standard training and test set were created along with an evaluation protocol and software to compare differing approaches. The best performing T60 estimation method was a signal processing approach, and the best performing DRR estimation method was a machine learning approach with a large number of handcrafted features. More recently, Gamper and Teshev have proposed a carefully designed feature extraction method and convolutional neural network for full band T60 estimation, which we denote as GTCNN. For this, the authors combined many diverse collections of real impulse responses and simulated impulse responses and they were able to achieve state-of-the-art results for T60 estimation. One notable issue that came up in this work was the issue of training data and data augmentation, which we have also experienced. For deep learning estimation methods, training data is key. To get a large amount of data in this domain, we would need to measure thousands of impulse responses in different rooms with varying microphone and speaker positions. We can also use acoustic simulators to create impulse responses, but they have noticeable statistical differences and or require thousands of 3D models, which still result in unbalanced data distributions. Second, we also note when we create a new training data set, we must accurately label it. We don't have access to the same ground truth estimators used to label the benchmarking data sets, however, so we must resolve this issue if we hope to have an accurate estimator when benchmarked. To address these issues, in our work, we propose an acoustic impulse response data augmentation method, or ERA, a basic calibration method for ground truth estimators, a simplified deep network design, and benchmark evaluation comparing our work to both ACE results and the GTCNN approach. Acoustic impulse response augmentation, or ERA. Since we're estimating T60 and DRR separately, we propose an augmentation procedure that allows us to parametrically control the DRR and T60 of an acoustic impulse response independently. Using this method, we can then generate a new training data set that is statistically well balanced and orders of magnitude larger. We visualize our DRR augmentation on the left, where we manipulate the amplitude of the direct path of an impulse response, and visualize the T60 augmentation on the right, where we manipulate the decay of an impulse response on a log scale. Let's dive into these details further. To augment the DRR, we simply increase or decrease the direct path scaling of an error with respect to the late field. To ensure the manipulated errors do not have any discontinuities, however, we apply a short crossfade window around the direct path of each error to smoothly apply any manipulation. 
In the paper, we go into further details on how you can do this windowing in computation in a way that you can specify the exact ERR you seek given any input. To augment the T60, we must first briefly discuss about ground truth T60 estimators. In both our work and the ACE challenge, we use the T60 estimator from Mati Karolainen et al. or the KT60 estimator. This ground truth estimator first takes an impulse response, computes a smooth amplitude envelope on a log scale, models the envelope via nonlinear parametric function of the T60 amplitude and noise floor, and solves via nonlinear optimization. We can further estimate the noise floor onset time by simple numerical search on the estimated parametric curve. To visualize this process, we show an impulse response on a log scale with blue dots, the measured amplitude envelope with a black line, the estimated parametric representation of the IR with a red dotted line, and the noise floor onset time with a yellow X. Using the same ground truth estimator and parametric representation, we can augment an impulse response by first estimating the model parameters of, an, of the air envelope, second, setting the estimated parameters to different values which we choose, and hence applying the augmentation. For T60, we effectively bend the slope of the estimated envelope up or down. Then third, we resynthesize the late field or end of the impulse response using the modified envelope. If we look closer, we first extract the early reflections of, or the beginning of an impulse response. Then we extract a late field, set the noise floor envelope to zero, change the T60 to our liking, and then use shaped Gaussian noise and impose the manipulated envelope to resynthesize the late field. Finally, we simply crossfade the early part and synthesize late field parts of the impulse response together to form the final result as shown in black. To really show the benefit of our error approach, we can create an example training data set. Specifically, we choose a small set of 16 real measured errors and augment each 500 times, resulting in a total set of 8,000 errors with a uniform distribution across T60 and DRR. We then convolve random combinations of speech with the errors and add in noise to create a final data set of over 100,000 four second training samples. As a final step of our data creation, we must calibrate our T60 and DRR labels from our ground truth estimators to those of the ACE challenge training data set, not test set. For this, we simply use linear regression with slope and intercept terms and reduce the prediction error between our estimator and the labels provided by the ACE training set. We do this, or when we do this, we can view the bias mean squared error and Pearson correlation coefficient rho between our ground truth estimators and the ACE challenge estimators to help us quantify a rough empirical upper bound on the performance of any downstream estimator. So once we have our new dating data set and a well, with well-balanced errors, we can build a predictor. In our case, we input four seconds of speech, compute a basic mouse spectrogram representation, and then compute a convolutional neural network to output scalar T60 or DRR values. For our deep learning architecture training and training strategy, we focus on a baseline deep convolutional network. We use the same design for T60 and DRR. We optimize for the mean squared error via the atom optimizer. And the network looks like this. We input a MEL spectrogram. We go through six layers of 2D convolution, max pooling, and batch norm. We flatten the output, apply dropout, and have a final dense layer to predict our final result. This network is intentionally not fancy. To evaluate our training data approach and network design, we follow the ACE challenge evaluation protocol, meaning we use their test data and software where no test data was used to develop our algorithm. For evaluation metrics, we use the mean squared error, Pearson correlation coefficient, and bias. For baseline methods to compare against, we use the best approaches found in the ACE challenge for both single and multi-channel. We compare against the GTCNN method that was previously published our own implementation of the GTCNN method using our data and our CNN using our data. Some conclusions for the T60 evaluation. Using error data with existing path methods can further improve the state of the art. Using error data with our simplified CNN is either comparable or further improves the state of the art. 
The correlation coefficient of our final, final estimator approaches the correlation coefficient of our Cronstrath estimator when compared to the ACE challenge estimator, suggesting it will do, be difficult to improve the results further on this data set. If we look at the full table of results, we can show the previously published methods in yellow, re-implemented methods in green, and our proposed final estimator in blue. Relative improvement compared to past work is roughly between 10 and 30%. Similar conclusions can be made for DRR evaluation. Some conclusions include using error data with exi existing methods improves the single channel state of the art. Using error data with existing methods improves or is incomparable to even multi channel state of the art methods. Error data and our basic CNN improve this result further. The final table of the full results is shown below, where previously published results are in yellow, re implemented results are shown in green and our final method is shown in blue. The relative improvements range from 27% to 56%. In terms of computational complexity at inference time, if we look at previously published results in yellow, the GTCNN method is roughly a real-time factor of 20. Our re-implemented method is a rough real-time factor of 23. And using our CNN, uh, we can achieve a real-time factor of roughly 110 times. This achieves a relative improvement between four to five times faster than previous state-of-the-art. For some conclusions, we propose a new impulse response data augmentation method for T60 and DRR. We have a basic calibration for ground truth estimators to help improve benchmarking. We have a simple baseline CNN estimator. This estimator is better or comparable to all previously published single or multi-channel state-of-the-art methods as compared against on the ACE challenge test set benchmarking. The method is approximately five times faster than previous methods. For more details, please refer to our ICAST paper. Please also see a paper that leverages this work with myself and colleagues was published at IEEE VR, titled Scene Aware Audio Rendering via Deep Acoustic Analysis. Stay safe and healthy.